What's up, YouTube? Audi SG General back again with another inner system news update. Uh, we have plenty more to catch up on, guys. This is going to be probably be a two video thing because there was some stuff that, while well, I've got collected and ready to go talk about, uh, I've been asked not to talk about it quite yet. So we're going to save some of this, even some of the stuff I can talk about, till later just because it makes sense to do that stuff together. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the things we can talk about. Uh, we are going to be starting off with Operation Trebuchet and First Contact again, because even though we just covered them and had them basically be the sole focus of last week, they did release some new content that they are working on, and it's all pretty awesome. Uh, starting off, we have Oshin, who has been working on a new EVA helmet that he's given to the team, and, uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, it goes really well with his Mark VI armor, it looks like, and, uh, yeah, it's, I think that's the Halo 3 style helmet. It, it looks great. I like it. Um... Not much else to say about it. It's another Spartan helmet. It's it's a cool piece, but uh, we you know we've gotten a whole bunch of Spartan helmets and stuff recently, so it just it kind of makes sense with all the other stuff we're getting. Um, on that same kind of vein, though, we have Ace Extension getting upgraded, so we've got uh, new arsenal options for knee guards, which is pretty cool. And then uh, a little bit more exciting for me is an update on the Falcon. So Falcon textures are mostly finalized now. And door gunners were confirmed because I talked about that in my, in my last video. And we really need Space Vietnam just blasting Fortunate Son going through the jungles fighting enemies, right? That's just, is that just me or do you, are you guys excited for that? Let me know in the comments below. Are you guys excited for Space Vietnam? Let me know. Um, first Contact, though. Let's talk about First Contact before I get too off track with Space Vietnam. Uh, we've got a couple things for First Contact. One is a Elite Officer, which was made by Braz. Uh, this is going to come in a bunch of different flavors. So you'll have orange. It looks like there's going to be a red variant and like a purple variant or something. A um, bunch of different work in progress textures the dev team was showing off, which is great. I love having variety and a new armor set and everything for the Elites is going to be great. Uh, something to kill for some of the folks and something for, you know, those uh, Elite players to use themselves, you know, but we don't talk about them too often. Uh, you know who you are, and we're all disappointed in you. You and us forever. Uh, then we have the Space Pickle, guys. The Space Pickle is getting added, and if you guys don't know what the Space Pickle is, that is the Covenant Bomb from Halo 2. Uh, unfortunately, Thomas has said this will most likely be a static prop, which is disappointing. Of course, I think we would all like a functional, massive bomb for the Covenant to use. Um, with that being said... It's, uh, you know, it's still pretty cool. It's a great prop. It's going to make a great objective for either defense for those Covenant players we were just talking about, or obviously a objective to disable or steal for the UNSC players. Um, yeah, it's great, though. It looks good. Uh, the emissives at night look fantastic, I think, and I'm uh, pretty excited to see this thing in game. So let's, uh, let's switch off of Optrain. We're going to talk about the first MEU next. Uh, starting us off with the first MEU, we have a new Spartan laser. This Spartan laser functions pretty similar to a rocket launcher, as you would probably imagine. Uh, it fires a quick round. It's not a full laser beam, but it's a quick red blast that comes out of it. It annihilates vehicles. The model looks pretty good. But, uh, yeah, not that different. It's, I think it's got, like, four shots, and then you have to reload the battery or whatever. So it, it's kind of a neat thing. Definitely a great additional asset to have. But uh, there is another Spartan laser, which I think functions a little bit better, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. I, if I could have a combination of the two of these, I think that would be the ideal world, because I like this model a little bit more. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the first MEU stuff, and like I said, we'll talk about the other Spartan laser more in a little bit. Uh, the first MEU has also added two new Covenant static props, which is the Spire, which we already had one of those from the 41st, and I feel like there may have been another one, but maybe it was just the first MEU one and I forgot about it. Um, but they've got a Spire prop in now, and they've got a Covenant antenna piece, which is a much smaller prop that's, uh, you know, obviously these aren't game-changing. The, the Spire are a little bit bigger, obviously, physically speaking, but also... Uh, in terms of like landscape creation, stuff like that. But the antenna is still a nice prop, and I've said it a million times. It's really those little props in my mind that really makes a mission and really makes it feel like it's set in the Halo universe. And having all these small props like coming to antennas and stuff to lay around uh, really makes a big difference because it looks a lot cooler having this stuff all over the place than just one massive out of place spire in the middle of Kavala or whatever. Um, 
But in more usable assets and a little bit bigger news, they've added a number of other things, including the Weevil Artillery Cannon. Uh, I believe this is artillery seen in Halo 2. This thing isn't very big, though. Um, it, it's decently sized, but it's smaller than you would expect, I think. Uh, I tried linking this up to the artillery support system and it wasn't working. Uh, I was using other artillery with the support system just fine, so there seems to be potentially some sort of issue with the Weevil artillery itself at this point in time. With that being said, if you are directly controlling the artillery, it does have an artillery computer, it does fire and function, so it is a working asset. Uh, it just seems a little bit limited. It can't be used in a support role, which I think a lot of the community probably wouldn't be doing that anyways. Um, obviously, there's certain groups like the the elite players. Again, we've mentioned them a couple times. They would probably do it, but I think for the vast majority of the player base, that's not going to be the case, thankfully. Uh, but again, in the right situation or the right circumstances, if you're using it yourself, it does work. Uh, then we have another weapon to talk about, which is the Concussion Rifle, which we talked about the Concussion Rifle last week, because Optre just added one to First Contact. Uh, the First MU has also added their own Concussion Rifle. It looks a bit different, it sounds a bit different, and it functions differently, so... There is space for these two props to be in together, because I think that each are gonna have people who prefer one versus the other. And I, I think there's gonna be a point of debate between some players which one actually functions better. But uh, it is great, you know, of course, uh, you know, having extra versions of these weapons are similar based off of the different Halo titles or just work a little bit differently is always kind of a welcome thing when it does happen. Um, but I think probably the most exciting thing for me is our next thing, which is we have two variants of the Covenant bus, a.k.a. the Shadow. Uh, we have a troop transport version and a vehicle transport version, which doesn't seem to actually transport vehicles yet. Uh, I forgot to check the scroll wheel to see if scroll wheel worked to load the vehicles, like the Optre Pelican, but the default Arma vehicle and vehicle didn't work, and it's something I should have checked with the guys from the first MEU, but I didn't think to at the time. So if anybody from the first is watching this, I'm presuming there's at least one person, if you could let us know in the comments below whether or not that's going to be a thing, that would be great. Uh, other than that though, yeah, it's a great prop. It looks pretty good so far. It's still not quite finished. If you're controlling it from the first person, the camera's kind of janky for it. So it's not really something designed to be used by players, at least at this point in time. Uh, obviously that could change. I don't know what all they have left. And I think there's still another version of two or two of this that they have yet to add. So we could still see some further changes to it as well. Uh, aside from that, we have one final thing from the first MEU, which is the Enforcer Sentinel. Uh, I'm gonna have to apologize for my B-roll footage on this one. I could not, for the life of me, get, like, decent footage of this thing. Uh, it is a cool unit. I should have just had it without combat and just had it floating around and just stuck the camera close to it so you guys could get a good look at it. But I wanted to show it off in combat. Now, it is a very large asset because it's the Enforcer Sentinel. It's designed to combat vehicles and stuff. Uh, it will sometimes devastate infantry. It seems to fire much slower and less frequently than the, uh, the aggressor sentinels, the much smaller sentinels. But when it does hit something with its weapons, when it is shooting them, it does a lot of damage. And I imagine if this thing was in a much larger open space, facing off against vehicles, which is something I didn't really test it in properly... Uh, I could definitely see this thing being absolutely devastating on certain maps or in certain situations. With that being said, in smaller enclosed spaces or against infantry, it's not nearly as strong. I think in a lot of ways, again, it will devastate them when it hits. It is very tanky, so there is, I think, a space to have it over regular just aggressor sentinels and stuff, but not necessarily the best unit for that particular scenario. Uh, then we have another unit mod to talk about, guys. We have the 19th Fleet, and this one is really exciting for me. Now, there's a lot of things happening with the 19th Fleet assets. Uh, some of those are getting shifted over to a different mod, but we'll talk about that in next week's video. Uh, but they are also in the 19th Fleet mod, so a couple of different places. So I guess we're going to talk about some of these assets multiple times. Uh, we've got a bunch of new building assets, so a bunch of new, new Mabasa buildings. That's not quite a tongue twister, but almost new, new Mabasa buildings. Um, we also have some concrete barriers and a concrete tower, which I think the concrete tower is based off of Halo Wars, but it could also be the Halo 3 tower from High Ground. I can't remember. I feel like the High Ground tower might be a little bit different, but I'm just going off of like memory and I haven't played on High Ground in forever. Um, 
But yeah, it's concrete towers and new Mombasa buildings. The new Mombasa buildings have interiors and everything. They're fairly basic in terms of the interiors, but it is still nice. The exteriors look great, and I'm hoping that the uh, the Moo project, uh, the new Mombasa project, that is actually gets a chance to utilize these building assets and uh, everything. So we'll talk more about that, though, at a different point here. Uh, in addition to the new buildings, they've added the Halo 2-style barrier that the UNSC uses. Uh, kind of a neat barrier because it has a animated function that it will start off in a down position, and then you unfold it, and it props it up into a deployed position. In terms of functionality for Arma, there's probably not much use for this. Obviously, realistically speaking, it would make it easier to store the barrier in a limited area space. Um, but with that being said, obviously in Arma, you're going to have these things pre-placed down, but it still looks neat having this thing fold up, and it's a cool-looking barrier, so I like it. Uh, probably, though, the most exciting aspect are these next couple of assets, and I think this is probably some of my favorite stuff to talk about this week, and that is the new drop pods and ship stuff that the 19th fleet has. So, uh, Demonic has gone ahead and created the Halo 2 style drop pod, which in terms of, uh, quality over the original drop pods, obviously it's a different design, but it is uh, much, much improved in terms of materials and textures compared to the original Optray assets because the drop pods we currently have, are from like 2014 or 2015 i think i can't remember exactly when they were created uh i want to say it was 2014 like the end of 2014 is when we had these original drop pods created i don't think they've been touched since then i could be mistaken but uh outside of like code stuff that is uh but yeah great looking drop pods they function pretty much the same the 19th fleet mod does include a special atv script that utilizes these drop pods instead of the Operation Trebuchet ones. Uh, so yeah, fantastic. Now they are a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm not sure that that's going to matter too much in terms of most gameplay, but something to be aware of, they are a little bit bigger. Now, perhaps even more exciting is the addition of new modular ship pieces and their new Halberd class uh, destroyer, which is the third Halberd class in Operation Trebuchet. Who would have thought of all the ships we would have so many different versions of it would be the halberd i i always like the ship design and a lot of other people obviously do too but you would think it would be something like the halcyon or the marathon class or the frigate well i guess with the frigate we actually do have like three or four versions of it now i think uh um <laughs> But you would think that would like the housing or something would come first. But yeah, this is our third iteration of the Halberd class destroyer. Uh, the other ones being the pull arm production one from Ethan and the 41st, which I think was made by Sanchez, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I, and this thing looks fantastic. I mean, the the ship itself is a great prop. But what's more exciting is that it came with a bunch of modular ship interior pieces based off of the Pillar of Autumn. Um, so this was basically inspired or started kind of based off the work being done by Project Shipyard and Demonic being Demonic just went crazy with this and just pumped these assets out like crazy. And so now we have an entire massive ship interior for this Halberd class that works just like the Drake class. Uh, so you plop this thing down, you're going to have not only a massive hangar bay, you're going to have, uh, you know, cafeterias, armories, uh, you know, sleeping bays or troop troop base, I should say. You've got a command center. You've got an engine area. You've got a bridge to the ship. You've got working elevators. It is a pretty freaking insane asset. I mean, this thing's huge. And what's great is that you can get the ship like the Drake class and have it just all basically stuck together and you don't have to do any work. Or you can take all of these pieces and make your own stuff. So people are going to be able to make base hallways out of this stuff if they want to. They're going to be able to put this into other ships. So stuff like the frigates. You know, things like the uh, the Halcyon class from the 41st. That's why I'm really waiting to see these hallways utilized in. Because the Halcyon class uses completely different hallways that aren't actually utilized by the Halcyon class. And here we have Halcyon class hallways. So I'm waiting for some community member to make just an awesome, insane interior for the Halcyon class by the 41st using these hallways. But nonetheless, it is fantastic. Uh, like the Drake class, you can elect to also use uh, AI or remote-controlled UAV-based turrets, which are faction-based. 
and uh, you can elect to also spawn this in with uh, escape pods. So they work basically exactly the same as the Drake class you spawn in. It will spawn in escape pods that you can open up, get in, and then it will blow off the doors off the side of the ship and then launch the escape pod out. Uh, it does not come built in with a script for the drop pods at this point in time. Uh, that could change, but like I said, the drop pods are larger than the Operation Trebuchet Halo 3 ODST style ones. So they don't actually drop through the ship physically, so I don't know that they would be able to do that the same way as they do on the Drake class because the pods are smaller in the Drake and they just physically are able to drop out of the ship. So I don't think they'll be able to do that necessarily with the uh, with the halberd, but who knows? But yeah, that's the one I'm personally most excited for. So these uh, these next couple things, I can talk about one of the two of them, but like I said, I want to hold off on that just so we have a little bit more stuff to talk about next week. Because I think looking at this, I had enough stuff that I could basically just do this all as one video. So to make that a full video, we're gonna hold off on talking about both of these things. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and skip a forward on my script here a little bit, and we're gonna go to Freefall X. Now, this is not specifically a Halo mod or Operation Trebuchet supporting stuff. This is just a random Arma mod that happens to work extremely well for the needs of the Operation Trebuchet and Halo community. Uh, Freefall X basically makes it so that if there is an object that is walkable within a certain distance of the character, your character will not go into a Freefall animation. Uh, it's not perfect. Sometimes when you spawn in, you'll still be in free fall temporarily and stuff like that. But mostly when you're transitioning over objects, even if there's small seams and stuff, usually you won't go into free fall with this, which is fantastic. Obviously, we were just talking about uh, the new Halberd class, which is very, very large. By the way, it's very tall. Uh, and that means even if the thing is touching the ground, by the time you get to the top of the ship, you are at free fall height. Uh, this also means that the new asteroid bases that Nido Visitor just put on Phobos are going to be much more uh, usable. So if uh, if you guys haven't seen Freefall X, it dropped a little while back, but if you missed it, this is going to be a must-have for a lot of you guys. I definitely strongly recommend it. Now, I do think the first MEU also just released something like this into their modification not too long ago, so they have something similar built into there. So if you're using the first MEU, you might not need to use Freefall X, but if you're not utilizing that or if I'm incorrect on that information, yeah, definitely a must-have mod. Uh, the other one, again, not specifically Halo related, but we're talking about it here because it makes sense in Halo and Halo utilizes very similar technology. So even though this isn't based off of Halo, it can easily pass as something from Halo. That is Gibby's Dome Shield, which I think is based off of Apex, if I recall correctly from what they said. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, but yeah, it is a throwable grenade bubble shield, which we've already got some of those in uh, some of these side mods. But what makes this one cool to me is that it's a temporary bubble shield, but once it's done, it spawns in a new grenade that you're able to pick up. So you're basically able to keep reusing this thing, essentially. So it takes up a fair bit of inventory space, but yeah, once it's done, it basically stops and then it's got to you know, recharge or whatever you want to call it. So you just pick it back up and then you can keep throwing this thing down as you need to, and you're not just stuck within a single spot, which I think is fantastic, and I think it's super useful. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people are going to want to utilize this. If you guys are utilizing bubble shields already, um, Gibby's Dome Shield is definitely something to look at for you guys. So the uh, the new Mombasa project. This one's a little bit unfortunate news. So progress has slowed to a crawl. It's not dead. Some people were saying it's dead, and there has been some progress made, but it's not very much. Uh, the last substantial updates I saw were back in September, so it's been a couple of months, but, um, you know, there is people still putting in work, there's still people making changes to it, they just haven't pushed those updates. Um, so hopefully they'll, they'll continue or things will pick back up with it. Obviously it is a huge, very, very ambitious project, and we've talked about that a lot before, and, uh, there's definitely some skepticism that I have with the capability to do all of uh, New Mombasa in Arma and keep it, you know, decently performing. Not to mention just the sheer amount of work that it takes putting together these insane cityscapes and everything. Um, it's either that or we just need to get like Demonic and GEK into a room together and just 
have them go nuts and I think they'll finish it in probably like a week and a half. But, uh, you know, failing that, it is uh, it is still being worked on. Like I said, hopefully the uh, the 19th fleet assets with their new new Mombasa houses will be able to, something that, uh, you know, they can utilize and make use of in there. And uh, I am still wanting to see what happens with that. I would love to have do Mombasa as a, uh, a mostly functional map would be great. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about Operation Arsenal Expansion. Now, I mentioned earlier that the first time you had a Spartan laser, but it was not the only one. Operation Arsenal Expansion has the other one. Now, in terms of the model, I like the one in Operation Arsenal Expansion less. But, functionally speaking, and this is where Jack War, of course, shines, is at doing scripting stuff. It functions near enough to the original Spartan laser that uh, it is wholly unique in terms of Arma. So when you fire the laser, it's got to charge up and you see the laser getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it fires. Uh, it doesn't seem quite as outright strong as the one from the first MEU, but the advantage to that is that it's not going to like overpen infantry or something where it's not going to kill infantry because it's it just like armas them and like it goes right through them so fast that, like the infantry is too dumb to realize that they just had a giant hole blown in them. Um, so this will kill infantry and vehicles. It might not kill the vehicles outright in a single hit, but it's going to do a lot of damage to him. Probably if it doesn't kill him, they'll disable him in most situations. But nonetheless, I mean, it's, it's again, functions like a Spartan laser with the charge up and everything. It's not exactly the same because of certain armor limitations and stuff, but pretty, pretty awesome stuff. I'm really excited for it. Uh, we do have a little bit of Operation Cosmetics news, but uh, we're going to hold off on talking about Opcos until next week because that goes well with the other stuff we have to talk about next week so then we have project shipyard to talk about instead so i mentioned that uh demonic basically beat project shipyard to the punch on doing all these ship interiors for arma 3 uh that had been originally project shipyard's goal was to create a bunch of pillar of autumn based interiors in arma 3 for the community and uh because of the speed at which demonic was pumping out assets uh, Project Shipyard team has decided to focus on Reforger instead. So they've moved out of Arma 3 and they're going into Reforger. Uh, they are continuing work on their assets, so they have a bunch of ship interior pieces they've been pumping out and working on. Uh, additionally, they are working on a terrain, which is based off of the Maw. Right now, uh, the initial goal is to have an interior section based off the Maw, which will be expanded out into a exterior version of the same level with a massive downed Pillar of Autumn on it and everything. And uh, I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, it's a little weird having this shift into Reforger. I'm not sure how I want to continue covering that because Reforger is kind of Arma, kind of not, <laughs> obviously. It's, it's a different game, but it's made by the same company, and it's very similar, so it's in a weird space, but I think for the most part, unless the things get like completely different, we'll just continue uh, covering Project Shipyard as part of the inner system news for the time being. Uh, then we have pull iron production assets, and uh, Ethan has added to his... Uh, stuff with the shinobi so the shinobi is his uh vehicle that he's been working on for a while it comes in three variants a troop transport a uh open topped cargo carrying variant and a variant with a uh turret on it for you know shooting tanks and stuff like that it's uh it's a pretty decent unit obviously it's not based off of anything from halo itself it's a, a fan in design but it is using the unsc logo and everything uh, it's pretty awesome. The driver does have a interior to look around in physical space. It's fairly basic right now, but not a lot of people actually do the interiors for the driver. So that's always a nice thing to see when that does get added, having that actually modeled out and be something that as a driver, you can physically look around the inside of the tank that you're inside of. It kind I think it helps a little bit with immersion, even when it's really basic, kind of like this. But uh, not much else to say on them as of right now. I think they're still work in progress from what I was told. I don't know 100% certain if that's true. But, um, of course, if they do continue development, we'll continue to cover them, and I'll talk more about that whenever that does happen. Um, speaking of whenever that does happen, Shawry, a community member, is working on a new mod that's going to be an independent mod for, like, a single asset, at least for the time being. And that is the spartan 3 spy armor 
this is something that the community has long requested, and no one's really taken on for a few reasons. Uh, probably the biggest of which is that invisibility in Arma is possible, but not really practical. Uh, you can just make a unit completely invisible, except for in like first person or whatever. I think you could probably do it even in first person if you wanted to. You can make them completely invisible, but it's not really how spy armor is supposed to work, and it doesn't really look super great because the AI won't acknowledge you at all. Um, alternatively, you can really, really increase stealth attributes and just like not make the player invisible. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. There was one that kind of came close where it was, uh, you know, it looked a lot like Halo Invisibility, but in certain environments or a lot of environments, it looked really, really bad and the player was actually probably easier to see. Where in certain environments, in the right environments, they were very difficult to see, but you could still just barely see them. Um, so it's definitely a challenge for Shari if they are going to do invisibility, and that is not guaranteed, but they are testing around different methods to see if they can get invisibility to be a functional thing on the Spartan 3 armor. But at the very least, they do plan to have Spartan 3 spy armor, and, uh... It is going to be in the mod. I shouldn't say Spartan 3s because I'm sure there was probably some non-Spartan 3 who made use of the spy armor. Uh, anyways, well, let's go ahead and talk about Spartan Melee. Uh, Web Knight. And yes, we're going to talk about Web Knight because I know a few of you guys are really fawning over Web Knight. Uh, he's working on the Melee animations for Spartans and Elites. So he's adding compatibility there. These guys are going to have... Unique running animations, not just from the regular Marines, but from one another as well. So Elites and Spartans will have their own unique animations for running, for melee, stuff like that. He's working on assassinations based off of Halo. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. The community has been bugging him nonstop. And the guy's not really a Halo fan, so it's really appreciated that he is going out of his way for the community to work on something he probably doesn't want to work on that much. And, and putting in some really awesome work on it. So it's very exciting to see this stuff, and I'm really happy about it. Um, so our next mod, we're going to skip over again, talk about that next week. So we're going to skip to the Precursors. And the Precursors is probably the saddest news, unfortunately, that I had to share with you guys. And the Precursors was formerly known as Optray Precursors. It is now just the Precursors. And that was the Flood mod for Arma 3 here. They have ceased active development. I don't know the details as to why, unfortunately. Um, obviously, dropping Optray from the name and kind of little tiny hints that were dropped suggests some sort of issue between the Optray team and the Precursors team, which sounds like it had something to do with assets presumably not being shared. I don't know if that's the case or not, though. Um, nobody from Precursors has really talked about it, and nobody from Optrays acknowledged it, so we're just kind of left to guess on that, unfortunately. I'm sure there's a handful of people who are in the know who just also haven't talked about it that aren't directly related to either team. Um, it's unfortunate. You know, this is, it was a really awesome mod. It still exists. They haven't pulled the assets or anything, so you can still use it. Um, Optrade did just push a hotfix that something had broken the Precursors mod, as far as I'm aware, and they just improved it. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, no developments were made since my last video, so there has been no changes on it, no additional stuff, uh, at this point in time. Hopefully that might change, you know, somebody else might come along and, and relations can get repaired or whatever happens can get, uh, corrected and we can eventually see... The Precursors mod actively developed again because Flutter awesome and there was already some awesome stuff in there and I think they could have gone even further with it. There was, you know, there's a lot of ways in which you could have expanded on a mod like that. Um, so we have one last thing to talk about, unfortunately, but thankfully we don't have to end on sad news. And that is a new Valhalla terrain, which I think snuck under the nose of a lot of the community. And that was released by a guy named Foyer in late October. Uh, so this is a small terrain, again, based off of Valhalla from Halo 3. It's not exactly one-to-one. -one. There's some differences, as you would imagine, in Arma. Um, but this isn't just something where he took a pre-existing terrain and slapped some pieces on it. This is just a completely new terrain from the ground up, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's unfortunate because I think a lot of these 
trains like Valhalla and Blood Gulch and to a lesser extent Gridlock don't really get utilized as much as they should or could be because most of the community is focused on PvE versus instead of PvP. Um, with that being said, it is a pretty cool terrain. I do like it. Uh, maybe a couple of small tweaks I would make personally to change it around to make it a little bit more accurate to uh, Valhalla in the games. But for the most part, it is pretty awesome. And uh, you guys should definitely check it out if you haven't already. All right, guys. Well, like I said, there is a few things we left out of this video, but we'll talk about that presumably next week. Um, you know, for next Saturday or whenever I get the next video done. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what were you guys most excited for about what we talked about today, and what would you guys like to see the most in the future if it's something you haven't seen yet. Let me know in the comments below, guys. Take it easy. I'll see you all in the next one.